So in this video, I wanna walk you through three scholarship essays that won thousands of dollars. And part of, I think, why these students won so much money for these essays was number one, they were incorporating four qualities of an excellent personal statement, which I'll walk you through in just a few minutes. Number two, they were using pretty good structure. And I wanna to talk to you a little bit about how the structure of each of these different essays works and what you can use in your own essay. And then finally, there's this technique that I wanna share with you that I think is often overlooked by students, but I think can really help you write more and better scholarship essays and ultimately get more free money for college. I'm Ethan Sawyer, the college essay guy. I spent a lot of time thinking about this stuff and I wrote the best-selling book on college essays. So let's do this. So this first essay, which won three different scholarships, was written by Peter Kang. Shout out, Peter. Thanks for giving your essay as an example. I wanna walk you through some things that I really love about it. Now, interestingly, this was written for an open topic, which means there was no prompt. Let's take a look at it and we'll analyze it as we go. Here's the essay. Fedora, check. Apron, check. Tires pumped, check. Biking the 35 minutes each evening to the cafe and back to work a six hour shift was exhausting. But my family's encouragement and gratitude for the extra income was worth it. Now already he's given us kind of like a little hook that raises a question. So why was he doing this? Why was he back biking back and forth? And what was up with the six hour shift? So little questions. One of the ways to engage your reader at the start of your essay is to include things that get us to like ask questions in our mind that you don't answer until later. A few years earlier, my family of nine had been evicted from the home we'd been living in for the past 10 years. With nowhere else to go, we moved into our church's back room for three months, where I shamefully tried to hide our toothbrushes and extra shoes from other church members. Right then, I made a commitment to my family to contribute financially in whatever way I could. My sacrifice translated to a closer bond with my siblings and deeper conversations with my parents, helping me understand the true meaning of a unified family and the valuable part I played in that. Now, this is a beautiful paragraph. He does three things well. Number one, he clarifies the challenge he experienced and the effects on his life. So here was the challenge. We got kicked out of our house. Effect, we lived in our church's back room. And then here's what I did about it. He says, I made a commitment to my family to contribute financially. He also actually includes a little moment here where he gives us a sense of what would the impact of that was on his life. So they, you know, he learned the true meaning of a unified family. So this is like a whole essay really packed into like one paragraph, which is really nice. With the financial stability that my part-time jobs provided, my mother could stay home to raise seven children. My learning disabled older sister could attend college. My younger sister could go on a mission trip to Korea and my twin siblings could compete in national math competitions. So check that out. Now we get a sense, we wondered earlier, why was he working so hard? Here are the specific impacts that working that job had for his whole family. And already I'm rooting for him, I'm like, wow. I've seen that even as a high school student, I have so much potential to impact my family and beyond, how one small act can go a long way. So two things that I've already kind of hinted at that he's doing really well, and these are two qualities of an excellent personal statement or scholarship essay. Number one, I'm getting a sense of this guy's core values. Core values are those things that you really fight for, those things that motivate, those things that drive you. So I get a sense of family, hard work, connection, right, and stability. So already I can name those core values just by reading this, you know, first three paragraphs. And number two, there's a little insight so that's the second quality of an excellent essay. Notice that sentence again. I've seen that even as a high school student, I have so much potential to impact my family and beyond. Here's the insight, how one small act can go a long way. Now he's pointing at something that I may not have noticed or maybe a little bit surprised by. And that's what you're going for when it comes to providing insight. You're answering the question, so what? In a way that hopefully surprises us. Notice what he does next. Through the successes of my efforts, I also realized that poverty was just a societal limitation. I was low income, not poor. I was still flourishing in school, leading faith-based activities and taking an active role in community service. My low income status was not a barrier, but a launching pad to motivate and propel my success. Now, this basically, this paragraph, he's answering, what else did you do? And he does it again in the next paragraph. To additionally earn more money as a young teen, I began flipping bicycles for profit on Craigslist. Now, here's a little insight moment. He says something I didn't expect him to say. Small adjustments in the brake and gears, plus a wash could be the difference between a $50 piece of trash and a $200 steal. Seeing how a single inch could disarrange the lining of gears not only taught me the importance of detail, but also sparked my fascination with fixing things. Another little insight where he says something we don't necessarily expect, he connects it to something else. 
fixing things. When I was 16, I moved on to a larger project, my clunker of a car. I purchased my 2012, 2002 Elantra with my own savings, but it was long past its prime. With some instructions from the mechanic, I began to learn the components of an engine motor and the engineering behind it. I repaired my brake light, replaced my battery, and made adjustments to the power steering hose. Engineering was no longer just a nerdy pursuit of robotics kids. It was a medium to a solution. Another insight, it could be a way to a career, doing the things I love. I was inspired to learn more. You see how he's stacking things here? He's already given us a sense of like how he's worked hard, you know, to support his family. And now he's talking about how this process of learning to fix things was leveled up, not only when he's fixing bikes, but now, bigger picture, fixing cars, and that leads to Last summer, to continue exploring my interest in engineering, I interned at Boeing. Although I spent long hours researching and working in the lab for the inertial navigation of submarines, that's what I call geeky language, which is another, just a little hint to the reader that you know your stuff, and in this case, you really sense that he does. He says, I learned most from the little things. Notice that's coming back to something that he did earlier, which is an example of what I call craft. Now, craft is basically showing the reader that you've clearly spent some time thinking about how the pieces of your story fit together. And in this case, he's got a theme now. He mentions earlier in the essay how one small act can go a long way. And now he says, I learned most from the little things. So there's a little connection to earlier in the essay. From the way my mentors and I began working two hours earlier than required to meet deadlines, I learned that engineering is the commitment of long hours. From the respect and humility embodied within our team, I learned the value of unity at the workplace. Like my own family at home, our unity and communal commitment to working led to excellent results for everyone and a closer connection within the group. So what he's doing here is he's reaffirming some of those values that he's developed and he's connecting them to earlier in his essay. So again, I mentioned core values already. The second thing I mentioned is insight. He's answering the question, so what, in ways that surprise us. Third, it's well-crafted and the fourth thing that he's doing, which I think is a great quality to include in your essay, is vulnerability. You really get a sense of who this student is by the personal details that he's including. Check out the ending. What most intrigues me about engineering is not just the math or the technology, but the practical application. It's through engineering that I can fix up my car and facilitate submarine navigation. Engineering, in fact, is a lifestyle. Instead of lingering over hardships, I work to solve them and learn from them. Whether the challenge is naval defense or family finances, or even just a flat tire on my bike before another night shift, I'll be solving these problems and will always be looking to keep rolling on. Success is triumphing over hardships, willing yourself over anything and everything to achieve the best for yourself and your family. With this scholarship, I'll use it to continue focusing on my studies in math and engineering, instead of worrying about making money and sending more back home. It will be an investment into myself for my family. Now, what I love about this essay, there's so much that I love about it. Again, those four qualities that he demonstrates, core values, insight, craft, and vulnerability, right? He's hitting all those. But if you notice the structure of this piece, at the start of the essay, he grabs our attention, he gives us a sense of some of the challenges that he's been through and how he worked through them. And then at the end there, he comes back to, again, here are the values that I've developed through these different experiences, which he kind of tracks us back through. And he ends with, here's how I'm gonna use this scholarship money. He's really explicit with it. And that's gonna help this particular scholarship essay apply for a wide range of prompts. If you're finding this content useful, go ahead and hit like or subscribe. And when you hit subscribe, hit the little bell notification and you'll get a little heads up when I release a new video. So the second example essay is a shorter one and it's got a really specific prompt. So check it out. What does it mean to you to be part of a minority community? What challenges has it brought and how have you overcome them? What are the benefits? And notice that it's 400 words. So when you're trying to think about how to structure your essay, if you've got multiple questions in the prompt, you can basically divide the number of words by the number of questions that you need to answer, right? So in this case, she's got three, but arguably four different questions that she needs to answer. A mistake that sometimes students make is that they'll basically write the whole essay on like one question. And then the second question they like won't answer, 
or they'll only answer it in just a few words. So make sure that you're answering every single question in the prompt. This student does a really nice job of this. Check out the essay and I'm gonna analyze it as we go. Being part of a minority is very conflicting for me as I feel both empowered as a part of a Haitian minority community, but also disconnected from my non-immigrant peers. Now, notice that she's already in the first sentence answering that first question. What does it mean to you to be part of a minority community? Next sentence. Coming from a background of poverty in Haiti, I knew that even at a very young age, I had to be a good student in order to succeed. This work ethic, founded through my Haitian community, has been very beneficial in my life, as we all came here to pave ourselves a better future. As my mom held two jobs, went to college, and was temporarily homeless just to secure me a better future, I feel invigorated to be part of such an indefatigable community. I love that word. You don't have to use big words in your essay, but if you've got one that you like and you want to put it in there, it, it can be nice. And it's because of this strong work ethic central to my community's core values that I'm now the salutatorian of a class of 679 students. And I want to like, you know, clap for her as I read that. Again, the thing that I mentioned earlier, you want to try to work in your core values. And in this case, we get family and we get this, you know, indefatigable, this work ethic, this like, you know, desire to work, work hard. And she's also answering, remember, she's answering the prompt. What does it mean to you to be part of a minority community? As I was so young when I came to the US, I didn't know how American society functioned, specifically elementary school. Now notice she's already answering the second question, which is, what challenges has it brought and how have you overcome them? That's coming up. I was the only immigrant in a class of 40, barely spoke English and had no friends because of these limitations. Every day of those first few years, I felt an almost physical divide between my peers and myself. I never experienced a sense of belonging despite my efforts. Already a double minority, as a woman and a black person, I tried to relinquish my language and culture in favor of American language and values to better fit in the crowd. By doing this, however, I almost completely lost my cultural identity as both a Haitian and an immigrant, and also my language. She's doing a really smart thing here. She's building up attention in the essay by showing us what she did that didn't work. What do I mean by this? Now, the, the question asks, what challenges it brought and how have you overcome them? Before she answers how she overcame them, she's giving us a sense of what she did that, like I said, didn't work. And what this builds in us is a sense of like, is she gonna be able to overcome these challenges, right? So it's building a little bit of suspense, a little bit of tension. So coming into the last paragraph, we're kind of wondering how is this story gonna end? And like I said, if you can include moments in your essay that get us to like wonder how the story is gonna turn out, that's what's gonna keep us engaged. It was in the halls of my first high school, International Studies Charter High School, that I realized the enormity of what I had lost. Where my peers retained their cultural identities and language, I had almost lost mine. It was there I learned to embrace a part of me that was virtually buried inside, as I was encouraged to be more open, speaking Creole with my Haitian math teacher and peers. As a senior, I now volunteer weekly, helping Haitian ESOL students with their homework. I'm both a teacher and a student in that small classroom, as I help them with their homework, and in return, they help me in perfecting my use of Creole. They are my daily reminder of what unites us as Haitians our ability to triumph in the face of adversity. Notice how she brings it home and she answers those final questions, right? Not only how has she overcome them, but what are the benefits? How has she overcome them? She started to volunteer, you know, with this tutoring weekly. And the benefits is that she's been able to be both a teacher and a student. And she's recognized this core value of the ability to triumph in the face of adversity. So she does a really nice job here, again, of demonstrating core values. We get some insights along the way into how she has gone through these particular challenges. There's beautiful vulnerability where she shares some of the details of her life and her struggles. And the fourth thing she does is that she crafts this really well. And what I mean by that is that I think the craft of this essay comes in how much information she's able to pack into basically 400 words. And that is not easy to do. So when you're thinking about craft, don't think, oh, I have to include all these like flowery details and I, you know, I need to like write a poem or something. Really, the most important thing is to include information. And the shorter your essay, the more succinct and straightforward you're gonna to need to be 
I think this essay does a really nice job of that. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the name of the author who wrote this essay, but I just wanna thank her for submitting this essay and for writing such an awesome piece. Don't forget to stay tuned till the end of the video where I'm gonna share with you the thing that I feel like students often overlook, and I think they miss out on scholarship money as a result. This third essay is on a totally different prompt, and it's got a different vibe, but I feel like there are some interesting lessons to learn from it. So check this out. This is from Isabella Mendez Figueroa, and it's for the National Association of University Women's Scholarship. The prompt is, please explain how your experience volunteering and participating in community service has shaped your perspective on humanity. Elaborate on how these experiences have influenced your future ambitions and career choice. Now, if you haven't seen it already, at the end of this video, I'll give you a link to where you can see basically the top 10 scholarship essay prompts, and I'll walk you through how to write each one of those. And this essay would have worked for a couple of those different prompts. So here's how it goes. I didn't really understand my community until I was forced to see it from the outside. Sort of like when you see a picture of yourself someone else took that you weren't aware of. Beautiful metaphor, that's an example of craft. Really grabs our attention, it's something that I think a lot of us can relate to. It took a 3,000 mile flight for me to gain a different perspective of the world, of my world. When I landed in Maine, it was nothing like the place I called home. There was no traffic, there were lots of trees, and absolutely no Spanish to be heard anywhere. I missed my people, my home, and my community the most as I saw the ways in which other communities fostered creativity, advocacy, and community involvement. I talked about my community every chance I got, writing a public backlash to Donald Trump and reading out to the group of parents to show them my unique struggle. The election of Donald Trump has forced me to come to terms with the harsh realities of this world. The lack of respect he has for women, minority groups, and factual evidence are alarming. This presidency makes me want to prove wrong all of his perceptions of people like me, the poor, the immigrant, the women. I left people in awe, leaving me empowered. I had people come up to me and explain that they can relate to my poem about not fitting in, being Mexican-American, and not feeling like you can consider yourself American or Mexican because you're both. I emphasize that I, like many others, am in between, and we have the same platform that anyone else does to succeed. I explain that many of us hold this pressure of first-generation children of immigrants to prove that we are the proof that our parents' sacrifices are restarting in a country was worth it. Now, pause for a second. Note that this student is getting political. And if you decide to get political in your essay, make sure that the organization is going to like, be likely to be aligned with your political beliefs. Because if they're not, it could be that you put off the reader and you, know, you end up in the no pile. In this case, I'm imagining the student took a calculated risk, researched the organization, believed that the organization or the scholarship she was applying to was likely to agree with her, in this case, they did, and it worked out for her. But it's a risk. All right, back into the essay. I was the visible representation of a first-generation child of immigrants, branching out into a new environment despite where I'd come from and shocking everyone with my prosperity. If I was the only visible representation available, I was going to use my voice to echo the feelings of my entire community and make it known that we are all here. All of our struggles, our efforts, and our passions are not absent from places where we are not seen. Maine helped me branch out in my own community now as a student ambassador. From this experience, I've learned that I can represent my high school and have the responsibility to assist staff at events for prospective students and organize presentations for parents. Now, here's where she comes back to the prompt. So notice again that the prompt, where it's asking about, explain how your experience volunteering and participating in community service has shaped your perspective on humanity. She had a lead up where she was talking about, it was this experience in Maine that gave her the confidence and basically the context so that when she came back and started working as a student ambassador with all of this, you know, she had all this energy now and this sort of new perspective on things. She says, I spent a lot of time interpreting for parents at meetings and explaining the current events that are ongoing and new educational opportunities that students should take advantage of. I've had the privilege to work alongside office staff and the principal, where I get to positively dedicate my time to parents who have general questions regarding the school's upcoming events. By dedicating my time as a student ambassador, here she's answering the prompt, I've allowed myself to excel at communicating with others and improving my customer service skills. Now these are crucial moments in this essay. And if you're writing about a community service experience or an extracurricular activity, making sure that you include in there specific skills, qualities, interests, and values that you've developed is gonna be essential. I want my education to change the negative stigmas surrounding my community by showing that it's possible to expand your access to the world and allow you to leave by choice through receiving a post-secondary education. So do you hear her core values in this, right? The value of education. She's also, there's the value of inspiring and helping others. 
I'm someone who's grown up in an area with limited resources, fostering limited mindsets. My neighborhood has four elementary schools, two high schools, and a strip club feet away from a library. What message does that send to children? It's normal in my community to have pregnant classmates in high school. People aren't aware of the world outside. They aren't encouraged to ever leave. Through my experience as a volunteer, that communicates a lot with parents. I've learned that the American dream does not simply belong to first-generation students like myself, Insight. I found that our accomplishments are stacked upon the sacrifices of our parents. I used to think that growing up was like the passing of a baton, where you're the next runner and it's your turn to run your best race. But I now see that this is a team effort, insight. Again, that's not quite what I expected her to say, and she's giving me a perspective on her world, right? I'm getting to see it through her lens, through her eyes. As you expand your horizons, your family also gets to experience the benefits. I wanna to demonstrate to my community that there can be a female, bilingual Latina doctor. I wanna showcase that one zip code doesn't determine one's success. One of the most common questions I get at these parent meetings is, what's better, college or university? This question didn't make sense to me at first. Then I realized that parents wanted to know the difference between community college and a four-year. Concepts like financial aid, grants, loans are all foreign concepts as most of our parents never went to college. They wanna be able to help, but do not know where to begin. As a student ambassador, I helped bridge that gap. We often held meetings where we explained to parents within our community what resources were out there and available and what the differences were among the different options for each student. Being the student face for Animo, I've learned that I, as a student and daughter, can provide assistance to my own community through the knowledge I've gained. I am the communication that is needed in my community that's necessary for further successes by using my personal knowledge and experience to help uplift and educate others in similar situations. Love what she's doing here. So one of the structures that I mentioned you could use is like, what are the challenges and how they've impacted me? What have I done about it? And what have I learned? This student actually takes this experience that she had when she went to Maine and you know gained a new perspective and it's how she brought it. And again, she's answering the prompt, how did you bring that into your volunteering experience? And she elaborates on how that trip allowed her to have a new perspective and informed her volunteer work and how that's led her to want to make a difference in her community you know, in the future. So that's a different three-part perspective, you know, three-part structure. It's like, here's the moment that changed me. Two, here's how it changed me and what I did about it. And then part three, here's how this is gonna impact me, I think, going forward. So that's another structure that you can use. All right, the thing I said I'd share with you is the thing that a lot of students overlook. Now, some students are under the impression that when they have like 20 or 30 different scholarships, they think they have to write 20 or 30 different essays. But that's just not true. I wanna encourage you to write what I call super essays. Super essays are basically essays that work for multiple different prompts. Now these different scholarship organizations and colleges are not like checking notes to be like, hey, did Isabella send the same essay? They don't care, they're not gonna know. And so I wanna encourage you to write what I call super essays. And I'll walk you through, in a minute I'll give you the link to a video where I show you how to write a super essay. And by writing super essays, you're gonna save yourself a lot of time and you're actually gonna improve the quality of your essay. So I wanna encourage you to apply broadly, which is to say, apply to a bunch of different scholarships, use this super essay technique to save yourself some time. And on my website, collegeessayguy.com, I've got tons more resources to help you through every other part of this process. All right, much love, best of luck, and I'll talk to you soon.